right. I got to get on my tippy toes next to her. How, how tall are you? I'm 6'7". What? Yeah, I'm real tall. Yeah. Oh, wow. You got to see her stand up next to me. Look. Yeah, look. Look, 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 at, look this. at this. Look at the height difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, right? This is the More Than an Athlete Hotline, Varsity Edition. Presented by Champs Times East Bay, where lifestyle and performance intersect. A place to call in and get advice on the challenges you face. Where the ones who come before you tell their unfiltered stories because they know that when you get knowledge, you give it. It's a one-stop shop for information designed to empower the next generation of athletes. Dial, Dial in. in. What's good? Welcome to the More Than an Athlete Hotline, Varsity Edition, presented to you by Uninterrupted Champs Times East Bay. I'm your host, Donald Delahay, aka Destroying, and I'm joined here by our amazing co host. Who are you, ma'am? What's up, y'all? I'm Sedona Prince. Um, I play basketball for the Ducks. You might know me as Sedona on TikTok, but yeah, man, I'm excited. Hooper, oh, Hooper, yeah. Hooper. <laughs> and I've seen you way too much. This is I what, know, our dog. third episode? Yeah, third episode. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. This is a show where we answer questions facing young athletes and we inspire them to be more than. Listen, guys, our first guest is a special one. You may have heard of her. She's an NCAA champion, and she's an athlete and a softball player in the Athletes Unlimited Softball League. Our very own Paige Halstead. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Thanks yeah, for having me. Happy yeah. to be clap here. Up, clap up, clap up, clap up. Welcome, girl. It's an honor to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Man, listen, today's topic is one that's very important. It's good for regular people, athletes, on the court, off the court, on the field, off the field, nutrition. Paige, talk to us about your health and nutrition journey. Like, how has it affected your career? How has it helped you? What's your nutrition like? Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's a huge topic, especially yeah. for athletes. Um, I think, I mean, I grew up in a gym. My dad started a gym when I was like 10, um, around that age. So I kind of grew up in an atmosphere where I was training with the elite athletes and I saw what they were feeling their bodies with. And I think... Growing up in that atmosphere, it kind of helped me pay attention to it a little bit more. Um, so I'm really thankful for that, obviously. So I think nutrition is obviously a huge um, part in performance. And for me, um, I mean, I just tried to feel my body as best as I could. Um, obviously, there has to be a balance sometimes. Um, but I think I've found that I would perform better with the food, the food that I was feeling myself with. So... Um, I mean, my journey is my parents were very strict on food, not strict in a bad way, but just kind of like taught me the ways to feel my body. And I'm obviously grateful for that experience as well. Nice. Um, do you have any, do you have any like struggles with food as an athlete? It's hard to like, yeah. you know, yeah, like manage when you eat, how much you eat. Like, what do you, what's your journey through that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I actually went like vegetarian my junior year in college, uh, which was crazy. It was hard to like find the protein intake yeah. that I needed to get. Um, but I definitely had some like struggles. Um, I did go through like an eating disorder as well, kind of. Um, my sophomore and junior year in college just because I wanted to become the best athlete that I possibly could. And I kind of took that to an obsessive point. So um, I kind of did research on my own to kind of figure out why I got to that point or like how to kind of get myself out of that point as well. So um, I mean, I, I take care of my body, but there is a there's a balance that you kind of have to find, yeah. you know. So. I'm not going to lie. You're going to have to help me with this because I'm, <laughs> I'm not the best eater. Like, <laughs> I'm conscious to eating healthy, but it's not something that, you know, count macros or any of that. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. There's a lot of nights that I eat hot Cheetos before bed. <laughs> so. No shame. That's not that's not that's shame. Hot Cheetos are nice, man. Come on. <laughs> Is there any health benefits to hot Cheetos or not? Nah, not really. I mean, it's a balance, you know. Yeah. It makes your soul feel good. So. Heart, it makes your yeah. soul burn. It makes yeah. your heart burn. <laughs> that's my next excuse. It's making yeah. my soul feel good. Yeah, it hurts in and out. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite, like, healthy meal what's your go-to my go-to yeah. um like it has to be healthy yeah i mean you, you, <laughs> you're healthy. trying to put go the to right things in your body right yeah, yeah i don't know i mean um i like chicken like i love chicken so like sweet potatoes and chicken Ooh, and like yeah. some veggies on the side like that's always like the healthy carbs um protein intake and some healthy fats as well you what, know what's your go-to meal donald my go-to meal yeah, you yeah. want the real go-to meal yeah, or the healthy the real. Go-to meal? <laughs> <laughs> i ain't gonna lie I could bust down some chicken wings oh, at any time of the day. Lemon pepper, extra crispy mm-hmm. with the fries on the extra side. Extra crispy, that's crucial. I'm, see, now I trust you more. But listen, listen, if I'm trying to eat healthy, I I used to hate sweet potatoes, but I like eating sweet potatoes now. Yeah. Chicken, obviously, is a big you know, big thing of mine. I like grilled chicken yeah. as long as it's seasoned, you know. Um, I like pasta. Pasta is like one of my favorites. It's easy to cook. Yeah, McDonald's, it's good carb. McDonald's chicken nuggets. Nah, bro, come, come on, on. They're come so on, good. Bro. Come on, <laughs> McDonald's chicken nuggets. Bro, it's, it's that's my go-to meal. You a D one athlete? And that's what you eat? Hey man, I gotta fuel. Are you serious? Calories are calories, man. Fuel. Yeah. See, like I said, 
I like to fuel my body the right way, and I like to compare it to like a Ferrari. Yeah, I'm dunking on girls with chicken nuggets in my stomach, man. Come on. Oh my god, man! <laughs> if your body's a Ferrari, you're putting the cheapest gas in it right now. Yeah, I do eat healthy most of the time, but uh, it's just like that kind of you know gives me a good break. It's balanced yeah. to like still feel like a human, like a kid. Yeah. You know. What she say? It's it's feeding the soul. It's yeah, feeding yeah, the soul. Yeah, feel it's good. All about, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's your go-to other than chicken oh, nuggets? Chicken um, same thing. I like chicken. Keeping it pretty yeah. simple um yeah. chicken sweet potatoes um broccoli vegetables like having a good mix of everything mm -hmm. is really important for me um but it all changes like after you know practice it's a recovery meal uh, yeah. before it's all about carbs and quick energy so just like balancing that throughout the day yeah. uh, and making sure i'm getting the right things for my body so a, a little touchy question and i don't know if you want to speak on it at all but like it's it's common i guess courtesy to want to overwork and work hard everyone's always saying no days off no days off and you spoke about like your kind of eating disorder mm -hmm. and that you follow it to a t to where it became unhealthy yeah. talk to us a little bit more about that like what was the process like and yeah. what were you eating like how obsessive did it become like i, yeah. I want to get to know more yeah, yeah uh for sure i mean like that is i mean i think i took it to a point where it was just kind of obviously unhealthy and i think a lot of people go through it um, on both sides. So um, what it kind of looked like for me, like I got to a point where I just wanted to become the best athlete that I possibly could um, for my team. And I took that in a way where it was like I had like a nutrition plan for myself. And I didn't like reach out and ask questions. I think that's my biggest flaws what that I didn't. That? What was that plan like? Like, yeah, give so me an like, example of a day eating. Under yeah, that plan. like when it was really bad. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think um, for breakfast I had like just straight oats, and I didn't like think about adding anything on top of it because I thought it was unhealthy. Like bananas, I stayed away from any like sort of carbs. I was like, except for oats, I was like very touchy about. Um, so I had like oatmeal in the in the morning, and then I'd go to weights at like 5 a.m. until like noon, and I didn't have anything in between that um, because we had weights and then practice, obviously. So we ended at like noon, didn't really feel myself with anything, and then I would have like a chicken breast maybe. Um, how did that um How did that like affect your performance? Yeah, I took I definitely took a toll on my performance um, because I was also like in that period of time I was on Team USA, so like I was training double time basically, and I just wasn't like fueling properly and then I felt like I was losing muscle mass I was losing fat so I was kind of it went to a point where it was just terrible for my health and I thought I was doing the best that I could to kind of you know be the best for my team but it was like the total opposite of that so I think I was just paying attention to more protein intake than like staying away from carbs and stuff like that what was that point that you kind of snapped out of and realized hey if I keep doing this like I'm not putting myself in the best position to perform when yeah. did you realize that you couldn't do that no more yeah, I mean, I went home for Christmas, and, um, like, my family kind of saw me, and they're like, dude, like, what's going on, you know? And I was like, I don't know, like, I'm just trying to be the best that I could be, and I just, like, didn't even see, like, myself in the mirror, basically. Like, you have kind of, like, a blind vision. Like, you can't really, I don't know. It was just, like, a definitely a dark place, for sure, um, but I thought I was doing, like, the right thing for my team, so. I'm so sorry you went through that, but, like, no, it's good. Yeah, it shows a testament to your strength to, like, get through that and realize yeah. that, you know, it's it's important. I mean, it's it's a struggle that a lot of athletes face yeah, um, in silence, usually, mm -hmm. so the fact that you're able to now talk about it and speak up about it and, like, hopefully help other student athletes, other people, yeah. is, uh, is pretty special, too. Yeah, and I thank you, and I think the biggest thing is, like, I found a community at UCLA. Like, I found so many people that were going through the same thing, um, didn't matter what sport, honestly, it was like a huge community of people and it was just like the support was unreal. Yeah. What's know? a piece of advice you have for like young student athletes, maybe they're in high school or starting their college journey, um, through nutrition? Yeah. Um, I would say feel yourself for performance and not, um, like what you see in the mirror. I think that's the biggest thing that helped me kind of snap out of it as well. You know, yeah. so. do you like a certain amount of meals a day or like, how does that go? Like right what's, now, what's your, yeah, what's your, your health and nutrition like now <laughs> yeah so I'll eat like three meals a day and then I'll have like snacks in between it depends on the day and like how much I work out um but I usually stick to like three meals a day and then like two snacks in the middle any hot like Cheetos that. in there sometimes <laughs> I do like hot Cheetos I like Takis though oh, a bit Takis better. or hot Cheetos hot take Hot Which, Cheetos. Literally hot take. Hot Cheetos. <laughs> literally hot take. Yeah. I say hot Cheetos, hot man. Cheetos? Hot Cheetos got like the jalapeno ones as but, well. But like, Taki's got the lime, that's dude. The, thing, it's the, the lime, lime makes it so. Yeah. Nah, it's not it's the same. Addicting. It's not the same. <laughs> All right, so Sedona, you kind of had a viral moment online where you um, kind of showed what 
these NCAA tournaments were like feeding you guys yeah. and the weight room situation. Talk to us a little bit about that. What's like yeah. nutritional access like for you yeah. guys? As I mean, um, we were getting fed like meatloaf and stuff. I mean, I was just Jeez. showing the process and the journey and how hard it was to get food. Um, and the men's teams were posting about their steak and lobster. Oh yeah, we were like sitting in our hotels eating <laughs> TV dinners. Like, really? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's definitely harder as a female athlete uh, to find good nutrition. Um, definitely a difference. We yeah. see it in you know every school I've been to, um, every program I've been to. Yeah. It's it's definitely obvious. But um, but yeah, man. I mean, the more that we call out on it, the more that we say at least speak up about it, it's going to change. Up, yeah. yeah. Inspiring change, pioneer. Yeah, man, pioneer woman. Yeah. Um, as far as UCLA, how do, how do you feel like the, the they give you guys proper nutritional access? Were you guys given the right things, like as far as meal plans and everything? Like, did they make sure you guys were on point and set up in proper positions to perform the best way you guys could? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm two years graduated, but yeah. when I was when I was in college, we did have a nutritionist, and they yeah. set us up with a plan and everything like that. So. Um, yeah, I think we had the right resources yeah. and everything like that. And just comparing it to the men's sport, I think that we were kind of equal on that platform, which is like very special. Um, but I do remember having that nutritionist and that was crucial for yeah. us. Did yeah. you notice like a lot of like your teammates or like other athletes going through the same struggles that you were? Oh, 100 yeah, percent. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Like it's my, wild. Yeah. My whole team has like usually struggled with eating. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty significant. And, like, I don't think it's usually on the men's side. Nah, I think it's usually, usually a thing. We eat too much. Yeah. We yeah. got the big lime and they got to cut weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ours is like, you know, girls, you know, image brings such yeah. a big play into such our game yeah. Yeah. and like just sports as women's sports as a whole. Yeah. So, yeah, there's been a lot of struggles with like eating and nutrition and body image and stuff. Mm -hmm. Man, how do you how do you deal with that? Because now you currently play. Is that like a thing on your mind? Is that yeah. something you think about or you of just course, yeah. eat to fuel, like she says, to fuel your game? Yeah, I still struggle with it. Um, I went to some of the same things, like I lost a lot of weight and I struggle with that, um, just like fluctuating. And, uh, and yeah, I've had to really like focus on, Hey, you know, if, if I don't eat properly, yeah. my legs are going to hurt. My body's not going to heal. I'm not going to gain muscle. Uh, I'm not going to go pro and achieve my, my goals. So it became something that, you know, it was necessary to do. Yeah. And I realized that it clicked in my brain and that's when I, you know, changed my entire eating habits. So, yeah. yeah. You have a very like different side of this yeah. in men's sports and especially football. What was your journey like through eating? I think it was pretty good. As far as college went, I feel like we were fed very well, like, They'd encourage us to eat more. They'd want us to get bigger, stronger, and protein shakes three times a day and, like, you know, the, the regular stuff. Um, I actually don't eat a lot. Just I'm, I'm not the biggest guy, so I try to eat consistently. 5'8". Five, 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 Chill six. out, bro. <laughs> Chill out, bro. Just because you're 6'12 and whatnot. <laughs> don't be nothing. 5'10", <laughs> by the way. But I don't know. I, I, I just... I got to get better at consistently eating. I know breakfast is like a struggle of mine. I wake up in the mornings, my stomach's not all the way like settled, so I don't eat a big breakfast. But as far as things went, we ate pretty good. You know, they took care of us. They had chefs, they had meal plans, they had like catering, they had protein shakes really available. Um, they, we were pretty well taken care of. What's your advice for, um, for non-athletes that don't have those kind yeah. of, of, you know? I mean, I feel options. like you should... First off, set a goal, like what do you want to look like or what are you fueling, you know. Most people, they don't go through the rigorous days of college athletes, so they may not be focused on fueling their performance, but what is your goal? Do you want to have a six-pack? Do you want to lose a little bit of weight? Do you want to gain weight? Do you want to gain muscle? Even like mindset, you know, eating healthy, fueling yeah. your body will change your mind and help Literally, you think and feel better. You'll feel so much better. Yeah. Your days will go by better. You'll be happier. You'll just feel better good you won't have all those aches and pains in your yeah. body and stuff uh, yeah. really a big mindset thing like you try to change a little thing in your day if you tell yourself all right I'm gonna cut this bad snack out and I'm gonna replace it with something good mm -hmm. eventually that will turn to you replacing two good things and eventually you're gonna be eating good all day so you know still squeezing some hot cheeto time but you know. <laughs> hot, hot cheetos man <laughs> you're gonna keep coming back to that <laughs> yeah for the most for the most part it's just kind of creating good habits i guess yeah. what about you guys what what do you guys page you go advice ahead. you guys got? yeah i mean uh, kind of going off of what you said i think like starting slow instead yeah. of like trying to jump into something mm -hmm. i think that's also what i kind of struggled with is like i wanted i wanted everything like right then yeah. and like once i got to that point i just cut out everything and i went crazy you know so i think like starting slow and like like what you said maybe taking out hot cheetos or like taking out something yeah. that's cheetos, <laughs> maybe not hot cheetos <laughs> 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 but you know just kind of like mix and matching like yeah. different things just slowly just so you can kind of gradually see the difference and know? it starts to like feel good after a while you you you're on a hot streak you're eating good for 
three days and you're like, dang, I want to go to the fourth. And then you get to the fourth, you're like, dang, I want to go to the fifth and so forth. Yeah. So it's just a mindset thing and just staying strong and yeah, you could eat healthy and look good, look how you want to look, yeah. man. Feel good, look feel good. good. <laughs> look good, feel good, play good. Right? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like once you get to college, everything is kind of laid out for you. Like mm-hmm. they're catered to making sure you eat right and, and do the right things, but to get to college, you got to go through high school, and it's very different in high school. What was high school like as far as nutrition and stuff for you guys? Yeah. You go? I, I got it. High school was hard for me. Yeah. Um, I was growing. You know, I was growing as fast as I was. Yeah. I was like six, seven, you know, when I hit my junior year. Are you serious? I'm serious. Oh, my yeah. God. Imagine, imagine trying to get pants and stuff. Let me get bro. some of your height, bro. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was hard for me. Just because, again, like these body image things started to come in. Yeah. Um, I started to develop as a woman. And so it was very like, you know, I struggle with that a lot. Yeah. Um, finding different food, finding healthy food. I'm looking at my parents taught me how to eat from, you know, from a very young age. Yeah. But um, but still, I mean, I struggle with that a lot. You know, making sure that I was fueled and I felt good and yeah. I could perform as well as I could. And so, you know, going to college, it's much easier. You literally are fed food. You know, there's food everywhere you go, protein shakes everywhere you go. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, finding that like, you know, it's a grind in high school. It yeah. really is. What about you? What was your high school nutritional journey? Yeah, I mean, kind of, it goes along with what you were kind of saying. Um, Obviously, like, you don't have a lot of things laid out for you, so you kind of have to do the research on your own. Um, Like I said before, like, I grew up in a gym, so I was kind of around those athletes, and they kind of taught me the ways that they were eating. So at a young age, I just, like, kind of had a goal, and I knew, like, what I wanted to accomplish. So I think having that, like, in my mind, it just helped me kind of, like, you know, feel myself and make sure I was doing all the right things to get to where I wanted to get, you know. It's such a part of like the game that no one ever talks about I is know. food, you know, because no, no one sees it. Everyone sees the highlights and yeah. the mixtapes and no one ever sees, you know, what that athlete is doing behind the scenes in the kitchen or eating and stuff. So that's crazy. Yeah. I feel like for me in high school, like when I first got to high school, I was probably like 120 pounds, bro. <laughs> I was very like <laughs> underweight and stuff. I don't know. My dad's skinny. So I got just the skinny genetics and I started playing football. I'm like, bro, all these guys are huge. Like I got to put some size on if I want to compete. So like, I made it a goal of mine. I researched a lot. I made sure I got my meals in. I had like mass gainer protein shakes. Like I feel like probably in high school, I was the most in tune with like my health and nutrition and just what I was putting in my body. And I'm not gained like 40, 50 pounds over the course of yeah. high school. Yeah. Just working out every day and just eating right. And I don't know, I was just very in tune with it. Yeah. And I, don't know, I did my research and I educated myself. And now I just, you know, just live. Yeah, when you went to college, did you ever see, like, I don't know, like compare yourself to the dudes that maybe had more muscle yeah. or bigger? How did that play yeah. a part? Yeah, I mean, I always knew I wasn't going to get as big as them. Yeah. And if I did, it, it's probably unnatural. Mm-hmm. Your body can only do so much. Yeah. Like, it, it's only it's only built as much as your frame is built. Mm-hmm. But... Um, also being a kicker helped if I was like a linebacker or something and I was sitting there 160 pounds I was like yeah I gotta switch positions but destroyed (laughs) yeah there was really no like necessities as a kicker to be a certain weight or height or whatever as long as I could kick the ball I was good but I always made sure I was eating good I was kind of obsessed with working out and just making sure I was in the best shape and and looking good and feeling good so I kind of took that upon myself to kind of take charge of you know so Dona, where did you learn about your nutrition? You had teammates or something that kind of got uh, out of the way for you? Did you see what they were eating and kind of? Yeah, man, kind of. Um, like we talking about, you know, not all my teammates yeah. usually ate. But mm-hmm. um, we got nutritionists and stuff. They're pretty cool. Um, usually just myself trying to find that motivation and stuff. But yeah, what about you, Paige? Um, yeah, I mean, I think my dad and my mom really helped me out with yeah. nutrition. Um, just because, I mean, my dad uh, used to run marathons. Yeah. So I was like wow. at a young age. Yeah, he's an absolute. Dang. How many miles is that a marathon? I don't even know. 26 I don't want to know. 26 like miles? 26. Yeah. He's, and one, well, I can't even <laughs> run two. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So like even now he's like still running and like in a great shape. So it's yeah. like um, having that just to kind of go off of and like yeah. learn from. Yeah. Um, helped me a lot. So. Yeah, I can't even imagine because like they eat like you know like mid run snacks. Yeah. And they like plan it out too. I can't even imagine that. Yeah. All right. So tell me this. <laughs> you're coming home for the holidays, Christmas time. No, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving time. <laughs> coming home, your parents haven't seen you in a while, and they cook up a big feast. <laughs> what does that table consist of? <laughs> Everything. See, like we're not like healthy like freaks. Oh, like we're right, not like right. crazy. Like we still have like turkey, yeah. ham, like big stuffing. Turkey, yeah. One or two turkeys. 
probably like two turkeys. Tur- oh, got two turkeys. Big yeah. family. Yeah. 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 Two turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> got got two brothers too, so they, oh, they yeah. eat a lot. Are they, so. are they are they like tall? Yeah, yeah. like athletes? six five. Oh yeah. 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 Are they table. very in tune with their health and nutrition as well or not really? Yeah. So um actually my brother Ryan, he's in the Giants organization, so he plays minor league baseball. Um oh, wow. so he's like very in tune with his body and like knows how to fuel it and stuff like yeah. that. And he's also a huge role model for me. Like fitness wise nutrition wise and just like my mentor so nice. learned a lot from that's him that's awesome too. that's special man Thanks. yeah we got to get y'all right man you guys gotta find one cheat day to come on thanksgiving yeah. and you know yeah. do you have cheat days what do you think about cheat no, days i mean i used to yeah. but like i really i think it's just like a lifestyle mm-hmm. you know i'm not trying to sound like cheesy but like yeah cheat days like it's almost like a punishment kind of yeah. like you know it's a punishment know. really i you mean like so? not like a punishment but like some like people are like okay i'm gonna be healthy for this amount of days and like sunday mm-hmm. i'm gonna let my yeah. body like, yeah. like finally i get to yeah. relax yeah. you know and it should be like that every yeah. day like, it's like yeah. a weird like, stigma on yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think like, i'm not yeah, against it at all yeah. i think it's very like toxic yeah. like this toxic culture yeah. of like i'm strict i have to eat this and this and this and then i have a cheat day and i'm like you know eating whatever the hell i want and i lose all my progress yeah or it's like designating like a hamburger as like a cheat day like why is that a cheat day you gotta feed your heart you gotta feed the soul Feed the soul, baby. All right, Paige and Donald, it is time for our hotline questions. Um, we got into a little bit. Now we get to answer some questions uh, that you guys asked. So, yeah, let's get into it. Yes, Erski, what you got for us? All right. Uh, Veronica Anderson Shoulders asks, how many meals a day do you eat and how many calories? Mm-hmm. That's a good one. You want to go first or you want to go ahead, Paige? Uh, you, you got it. All right, all right. To be honest, I don't really keep track of my meals. I'm a very busy guy, so I I definitely try to get at least three meals in. Mm-hmm. I eat a lot at night. I feel like in the mornings I don't eat too much, but at night I kind of make up for it. So I'd say probably at least three, three to four meals. I snack a lot. I love snacking on fruit. Hot Cheetos goes unsaid. Um, I don't know. I just I, I don't really keep track of it too much. Whenever you're hungry? Pretty much. As yeah. far as calories go, too, like, I can't tell you how much calories I eat. Yeah. I just make sure. I know my body weight, and if I've been eating too little calories, it's going to go down. Mm-hmm. If I eat too much, it's going to go up. So I kind of try to keep it around the same, you know. What about you, Paige? Yeah, I mean, I think I try to stick to, like, three meals a day. Yeah. Um, usually, like, a bigger meal at lunch, and then, like, dinner's a little lighter. And then, like, snacks in between. Yeah. Just depends on, like, yeah. the day, yeah. you know. Yeah. Same. I usually stick around, like, three. I try to, like get between 2,500 to 3,000 calories just because like, that's what my body needs. Um, we work out for like four hours a day in college. And so and I'm 6'7", I weigh like 215. So making sure that I have like the correct amount of what I need, protein and stuff. I'm not too strict about yeah. it, but um, just make sure I hit those marks and stuff and be safe. How do you keep track of them? Do you do a lot of label reading and you got like a little uh, pie chart or something you write I've, on? Yeah, I used to. Yeah. I pretty much figured it out by now. Like yeah. I know how much, like how many calories. It's like two eyeball, chicken huh? breasts. Yeah, like I, I, oh. I can guess. How can much guess. is a banana, huh? But, I don't know. <laughs> I thought you had it. 50. 27.5. See, I can't even tell you if it's right or wrong because I don't know. <laughs> exactly. I can say anything. <laughs> oh, man. It's right. the next one. At C Bass Chin asks, how do you eat clean while traveling so much? Mm. I'll start this one. Um, I've struggled with eating on the road a lot just because yeah. fast food's always around when you're in the hotels. It's readily um, available. Yeah. Sometimes, like, hotel food is yeah. kind of trash. It's just plain stuff. So, um, you know, making sure that if I am eating fast food on the road, that it's healthy, yep. that it's, you know, something that's conscious of what I'm going to, you know, if I'm playing a game the next day, I'm not going to eat, like, you know, two orders of fries. Yeah. You know, just being, like, conscious in that, um, kind of tracking it, making sure I'm careful. What yeah. about you, Paige? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, on the road when I was playing in college, um, our coaches had, like, set, like, restaurants that we could order from, which is, like, kind of crazy. Like, we had three meals that we can pick from. So uh-huh. it was either, like, a salad or, like, you know, just, yeah. like, yeah. different options and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Um, I don't know if it's, like, weird, but, like, I used to make, like, protein pancakes and, like, take them with me. So I had, like, the like that stuff and, like, granola bars and stuff just in case, like, yeah. I didn't have any other options, you know, just, like, k- keep my body yeah. on track and stuff like that. Yeah. As far as me, I, I mean, I travel a lot, and it's hard to consistently cook and stuff. Like, if I'm staying in the Airbnb, I'll try to go to the grocery store and get stuff like fruit, quick things I could eat. But as far as it goes, fast food and, like, I try to eat healthy, though. Like, I'll get the salads at Chick-fil-A or I'll get, like, a chicken sandwich, um, make sure it's not fried. Uh, I don't know. You could eat fast food, but like you said, there's healthy options. Yeah, in fast and a burger food. isn't bad. You yeah. know, everyone yeah. thinks that if you're eating fast food, it's yeah. disgusting and nasty. A burger or chicken yeah. sandwich isn't bad. You know, it's not going to kill you. Yeah. It'll be all right. 
long as you're fueling and like getting the amount that you need and helping you, you know, yeah. if your body's happy, that's all you need. Next question. What else you got? Next These have been some good questions so far. <laughs> Hey, make sure you guys send some more questions. Go down in the comments and leave us some more, bro. We're going to answer all these questions for y'all. The hotline is blinging. The hotline and is blinging. And we is answering. <laughs> 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 all right. Next question. Last question. Last one. All right. Uh, Hugh Renton asks, what's the day before like game day? And uh, what do you put in your body around like, you know, before mm. games mm. or after games? Like, what is that like? Mm. So I haven't played organized sports in years it's been like four years but they would feed us like steak they'd give us like pasta we try to get carbs in so we'd have energy to go the next day um salads uh garlic bread like i feel like that's when we ate like the best like they made sure we we're eating on point i remember one day our coach was so mad at us he's like man i'm gonna make sure y'all eat peanut butter sandwiches we're gonna get rid of all the steak and stuff y'all ain't playing good right now but for the most part, just like I guess a lot of carbs. Is that is that stuff carbs? Or yeah, what? you like yeah. salads, bro. What kind of they're salad? I, they're good. I you like can you mess know, up a Caesar. Caesar salad, the yeah, Caesar with a little crouton, a little parmesan on yeah, it. The yeah, the cheese and the yeah. Salad. I kind of make salads unhealthy because I put hella dressing on them. That's okay. That's okay. All right, good, good, good. good. <laughs> what about you guys? Yeah. What what's your pregame meal looking like? Um, I mean, the day before game day, I'd usually like eat a little bit heavier, just yeah. like try to carb up almost. Um, but like the day of, I would try to like. I might go to is like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, yeah. like something light because I mean everybody's different too. Like sometimes I need heavier food to kind of fuel mm. me, fuel me through the game, and then yeah. other days it's like I need a granola bar yeah. or something like that. Nobody understands yeah. that PB and J's are literally like PB&J. the most perfect like pregame. Crucial. Yeah, yeah, they're so good. Like NBA yeah. players eat them all the time. Yeah. They're like they're literally crucial. I ain't gonna lie, I don't love peanut butter. What? Oof. It's all right. Like mixed and stuff is cool, but like I don't know, it's not the best. What's thing. wrong with it, bro? It's just peanuts, bro. And just like <laughs> butter. Like, peanuts and butter. <laughs> peanut butter jellies are good, but I got to kind of force myself to eat yeah. them. It's not like I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, peanut butter jelly. I, like I don't like how it gets like stuck to your like mouth. Or, you know, yeah. Like, roof your mouth. You're like, yeah. Do you guys ever feel like pregame like jitters and like you don't really eat too much? Like yeah, you're not really I do too that a hungry? Lot. Yeah. What do you guys do about that? Banana. Yeah. Get banana. like some light, right? Yeah. yeah. Light, something. something. Just something. Yeah. You know? If you're not going to yeah. eat anything, that's the worst thing you can do. Just it something. Because I know there's a lot of times where I don't eat nothing and then like first quarter come by after the jitters are gone, I'm like, damn, I'm so mm -hmm. hungry. Like, yeah. I should have ate something earlier. Do y'all eat like a like mid game yeah, snacks? Yeah, they got the all? oranges in the yeah. locker room. Yes. I, yep. I, I eat like two bags of goldfish, <laughs> bro, every game. Every, every goldfish, too. Rice Krispie yes. treats. <sighs> they had them little chewy bars. The, uh -huh. the, um, uh -huh. the, the chocolate, chocolate chick chips. ones, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. a lot of things you can do to like, you know, know. make yeah. sure you're getting your stuff in. Make sure you guys are eating, bro. Like, yeah. I know it sounds very cliche, and I know it sounds like we're just preaching to the choir, but fuel your bodies. You will not perform the right way if you're not putting the right things in your body, bro. Trust me, take it from three, well, two world class athletes. <laughs> <laughs> three world class yeah. athletes, man. Come on. Take it from, take it from us, man. Fuel your bodies, eat right, and you guys will perform right. All right, y'all. That does it for this episode's hotline. Thank you guys so much for your questions. Um, please continue to ask more so that we can shed insight and answer your questions. Um, again, Paige, thank you so much for coming today. It was such an honor to have you on our show. So and uh, yeah, where can we find you on socials? Uh, my Instagram is just Paige Halstead, my full name. Um, and then TikTok is just Paige times Ryan. Nice. I'll have to, I'll have to give you a follow. Now on to our MTAA Athlete of the Month segment, the segment where we highlight high school athletes and what else they have to show for themselves more than just their points on the board. We are joined by our Athlete of the Month, Zaila Avant Guard. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing phenomenal. It's a pleasure to have you on. Listen, guys, Zaila is very special. She's the very first African American to win the Scripps National Spelling Bee. What did that feel like? What was that moment like? Uh, it felt awesome. The just feeling of having done it after all my years of work, uh, two of them, just felt really good. So it was really fulfilling to have that moment where I've done everything I wanted to do. That's awesome. That is, that is so awesome. I'm, is that, is that, I, I just want to let you know we're very proud of you. That's amazing. Thank that you. That is amazing. Yeah. Dial, I got a question for you, girl. What? Who do you think has um, empowered you to be where you are now? Uh, I have many... Uh, people in my life who have em empowered me. I mean, of course, I have my parents, and I also have my the people that I look up to from Malala 
to many other people, just with the whole body of African American women is, is another inspiration for me because that's one of my things that I want to do is represent African American females and just minorities in general. So I feel like they're my inspiration. Well, that is phenomenal, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. If you had to pick one person who was like your look up to, I want to follow their lane, like I want to be as great as them one day, who would it be? Probably like myself in my best case scenario. The thing is that I feel like uh, there are lots of people who I look at and are very inspired by, and I take little pieces of everything that they do, and I think it would to like make it into a composite. So see a little bit of what this person does, see what she does, see what he does, and then add it all together into an a ideal of what I want to be. And I think the composite of all the great things about many different people is the trail that I follow. That's awesome. I feel like I'm a little bit of the same. I take a lot of different, you know, views and points and and people like that I look up to just like yourself and and figure out my lane. Everyone has their own lane. So, you know, that's good. That's good. We heard uh, we heard you quite the dribbler. Yeah, you heard so you. got some hooper. basketball skills. I need you to I need you to give me some tips because I play ball too. Um, yeah. So I need some tips. Like, where'd you learn your skills? You know, give me some give me some pointers. Uh, I started when I was five years old and I learned initially from my father, but as I'm sure you can assume I'm much better than my father now. <laughs> so it's kind of uh, just a continuation. Like you start and then nowadays, I just kind of, I mean, I dribble with gloves. I would dribble with gloves on my hands and stuff, the stuff you do so you don't get grip and, some, and stuff. So I have some stuff I would do like that, but also just doing it. Like the best way to learn how to dribble is to dribble. And that can be said for everything. So that's kind of my pointers, uh, which is basically to practice it. Yeah, we heard you got three yeah, Guinness World three Records. That's records, crazy. Bro, what? <laughs> that's impressive. Talk to us about those. What 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 made you even want to chase world records? Like, oh, for my uh, eighth birthday, I got Guinness World Record book, and looking at it and going through it, and just kind of seeing all these different people with these crazy records. And there's some really far out ones too. And I just, I was like, it, I want it to be there and I want it to be in the book. And now I actually am in the book now. So I've That's kind amazing. of done what I wanted to do. And what was my inspiration. That was yeah, amazing. Like you, I incredible. said, we are so proud of you. Yeah. We are so proud of you. Yeah. Thank I got you. another question. So what does it mean to you to be more than an athlete? Uh, to be more than an athlete means to, uh, besides, to just basically work hard at whatever you're doing. Like for me, being at more than an athlete means hanging out with my family and doing my schoolwork well and stuff. Like I think maybe some people will sacrifice schoolwork and family time for an, uh, at, for doing athletics. And then they, when athletics are done, because I mean, you're always kind of one bad hip injury away from it all ending. So like... If you, if you focus everything into athletics and then you're 35 years old and there ain't nothing else for you to do <laughs> and then you realize that you should have been more than an athlete. So I feel like just definitely focusing on making sure that you're still doing school and hanging out with your family and building those nice memories is really important. Yeah, that's so yeah. important. At such a young age, I think a lot of athletes, you know, forget that they feel to realize one day, yeah, one day the gonna ball's going to stop old. dribbling. Yeah, gonna get, get old, old and... You a guard, you play guard, what do you, what do you play? I'm a point guard. I can't be anything else since I'm too small to do anything else. <laughs> How tall are you? <laughs> uh, I'm five eight. Oh, that's almost still, my yeah, height. Still, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> she got you beat. Thank God she's not here. <laughs> I know, right? I gotta get on my tippy toes next to her. How, how tall are you? I'm six seven. Yeah, what? Yeah, I'm real tall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. You gotta see her stand up next to me. Look. look yeah. Look. Look, look, look at this. this. Look at the height difference. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, right? I heard about your story, but it's amazing being able to sit here with you and talk to you and just get to know about you and how you have all these records. You're so educated. You're a cold hooper. Like, I want to get my skills up, man. I feel like both of you guys could run me in circles on a court. No, I need some I need some lessons from my girl Z. <laughs> give me some, come to Oregon anytime you want. Give me some dribbling lessons. I'll take them, please. So obviously you're very talented on the court and you're a very special individual in the books. What's that like balancing both of those? Because... I was a student athlete as well, and I'm going to lie, I struggled a bit. Oh, how do I do it? Um, mostly, I think it's kind of in your mindset. Like, if you wake up every morning feeling like, oh, my God, I've got so much stuff to do, 
uh, you're going to get a bit overwhelmed. But if you just wake up and kind of feel like you're, if it's, you're, all do, you're doing stuff that you all find fun, and then like at the end of the day, you realize that, oh my God, they've had such a busy day but it's really fun. But if you feel like, if you're like doing something you don't want to do, or it's just so, if you if you take on the mindset that it's just too much, then it's gonna feel like it's too much. But if you don't feel like that, and and then you will, it's not gonna feel like too much. That's so powerful. I, I noticed that you said mindset a lot. And I think that is so yeah. key. And a lot of people fail to realize that the mindset has such an impact on just your productivity and what yeah. you do. And you're young. What are you, 14, 15 years old? 15. 15, and she's yeah. already figured out the yeah. secret. I wish the, I would have had this figured out at 15. The mindset, crazy. bro. Yeah. yeah, props to you, girl. That's so impressive. I'm excited to see where you go and everything you do. How often do you do you train? Every day. Uh, well, almost every day. Yeah. I, I can't lie no right days now. days off. I... Come on now. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, sometimes I have off days when I'm, like, doing things like when I'm at the ESPNW Summit right now. Ooh. And so I'm currently in the hotel room, so I'm not doing, I'm still doing schoolwork. Uh, that follows me everywhere. And, uh, but basketball is something like, like, right now I'm taking like a, sh like a short break, but then the, like next day or so I'll be back to practicing. So I'm basically practicing every day, but uh, don't like, I would say don't, uh, just as a sidebar, don't feel like uh if you're don't practice more than you like really want to because if you do that then it won't feel fun and it's much harder to get good at things that don't feel fun man i love where your mind is at i yeah. feel like at that age i was not thinking that way yeah i feel like you got so many things figured out and you're so far ahead of your age and your time like yeah i don't know it's amazing who do you model your game after you got any any hoopers that you know you want to hoop like or Kyrie Irvin maybe i don't know <laughs> Uh, I'm actually really into uh, like Kyrie Irving too, but it's but my favorite player right now is James Harden oh. and Kevin Durant. But yeah, I like those two because James Harden has such a, a type of game where it's like literally he'll sometimes just slowly run into the hoop because people don't know what he's about to do. And I like just the idea of like not having to play this crazy game where you're constantly getting hit and bumped and uh, smashed the ground. But it's just kind of like, nobody's quite sure what he's going to do and so he kind of does whatever he wants keep him guessing yeah keep how is guessing. how is your like um academic success kind of followed through your athletic success like do you think there's a correlation between the two at all oh yeah yeah they definitely do i mean the main thing that or uh, anchors them that that makes them similar is just the idea of like focusing and sitting down and doing something like something that i uh I know that I have an advantage because I was study for seven hours or so when I was doing spelling and like try to sit my teammates down for 30 minutes and they'll struggle a bit. Uh, of course, there are people who don't struggle with that, but I feel like having that ability to like sit down and do this or stand up and run and do this is like a really uh, connecting thing that makes basketball and doing schoolwork and academics in general similar. That's awesome. I, I want to know a little bit of your background life. Like, I know you mentioned that your dad kind of got you into basketball when you were younger. Um, were they just kind of on you to play basketball and get your grades, or was it a personal decision, or what was that like? Okay, so I'm homeschooled, so uh, what happened is that my father, he says he was good. I mean, there is no <laughs> video evidence. But he says he was a good basketball player. I have no proof of that whatsoever. There's no but <laughs> just gotta trust him. <laughs> Your dad's listening right now, man. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Uh, so he but he was good enough. Like he the thing is that when I was a five year old child, I was a I was kind of that kid who was jumping off the roof and just uh, uh, just bouncing off walls and stuff like doing crazy stuff. So my parents were trying to look for a way to kind of channel some of that energy into non-lethal activities. And so they put me into basketball. So that's kind of how I got started. And I just really took a liking to it. And school was something that I started a bit earlier. And so school has always just been something I love to read and stuff. So, so I've never struggled with the, with the idea of school. You're so, I mean, it's just so obvious. You're so yeah. hardworking and passionate and mm -hmm. driven. And at such a young age, I mean, I'm so excited to see, you know, what you do, 
the more records you break, the things you accomplish, like, you know, I think everyone's a testament to like, we're all watching your journey and where you go. And like, you know, you can take yourself wherever you want to go. You have the, the potential to do anything. Like we in this said world. the mindset, you have the mindset. As yeah. long as you believe, as long as you work hard, which you clearly do, you can do anything you want in this yeah. world. I mean, you've already done so much. Like yeah. what else is there to do? What's next for you? What you got cooking up? My main idea is to go to uh, the, the Harvard University mm -hmm. uh, for to play basketball and also just to go to Harvard and learn stuff because it's Harvard. Do you have anything you and want to study so, specifically or no? Oh, yes. I have interest in genetics, uh, like gene editing and stuff, and neuroscience. I have special interest in that. And I also uh, want to get like work on that and college and stuff. But after that, I also have interest in, of course, going to WNBA. Or, or being an NBA head coach to infuse a little bit of that femininity, wow. femininity that's wow. missing a bit in uh, the NBA and stuff. And also because I love the game. And then uh, I also have interest in working at NASA. Wow. <laughs> Dang, girl. <laughs> She's a genius. I'm yeah. like appalled right now. I'm impressed. What, what about, so what grade are you going into right now, Z? Uh, I'm in ninth grade right now. Yeah. So I'm just starting out in the high school journey. Yeah, so what are your, what are your high school goals? What are you looking forward to in the next couple of years? My high school goals is to uh, greatly improve my game. I mean, it's already really good. We've seen, we've seen, yeah, we've seen. Yeah. I've seen some clips. I've seen it. <laughs> and then I also have interest in learning Spanish, and I'm doing piano. So I feel like learning Spanish and just foreign languages in general and piano are like my quote, my more immediate goals. Hey, you know, I know Spanish. I could teach you a thing or two if you need some tutoring. You know, <laughs> you just got to help me get my handles right. <laughs> me too me too okay. i'm included in this <laughs> no, i need I spanish and handles I got, I got you listen i know you said your game is cold and you're already pretty good but listen none of us are perfect if there is a flaw in your game or something you want to work on what would that be a flaw i mean i want to work on my whole game but let's see what do i if want there was to work a weakness on? that yeah. you could you know get better that you really want to focus on getting better No, probably off ball defense. Ooh. That's probably like the thing. Like on ball, you don't want me on ball Clamps. if you have the ball. So that, that's going to be a struggle. Yeah. But uh, off ball defense, I think, is where I can improve a bit. Like just because sometimes I'm so focused on what I'm on the press with the ball mm -hmm. that sometimes, you know, the uh, back door uh, like happens to me. Uh, that point where you turn away, like, wait, where'd they wait, go? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about what about post moves? You got post moves down low? She's, uh, she's five, eight. I mean, I I'm, 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 built, I'm built stout. And so, like, uh, like even, like, grown, uh, grown men and stuff sometimes struggle. Like, they think, oh, she's just a little girl. <laughs> and then I smack, and then I bump into them. Like, <laughs> yeah, girl. Everyone needs post moves, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I definitely... I, I'm definitely working on some things just because just to be have the ability to do everything. Like you never know what situation you might be in on the basketball court. So I definitely work on everything. That's what I'm That's talking right. about. You yeah. got to be prepared for every single situation. Absolutely. Yeah. There's always room to improve in your game and just keep working on every little, every little piece and bit of your game and just pick it apart. So this episode is very focused on nutrition. We're athletes, so we got a few of the bodies right. I like to compare athletes' bodies as Ferraris. Are you going to put 87 gas in it? No, because it's not going to drive very long. You got to put the 93 on lead in it. Do you focus on nutrition? Do you eat a certain way? Do you monitor the oh, things yeah. you put in your body? What's your diet like? Uh, uh, yes, definitely. I'm a vegetarian. Oh, wow. And so I'm not, I'm not just a vegetarian, but like I I. I I have a very like non junk food uh, diet. I, I mean, like I eat like vegetables. Like I love actually, I'm like the first kid I know who loves vegetables, and like I eat things like lentils and broccoli. What's your, and, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite veggie? Favorite vegetable. Um, I like all vegetables. The only vegetables that I hate. As I cannot stand, like, I get flashbacks every time anybody says you were at Brussels sprouts. Oh, my God. I, I love cabbage, 
but I cannot do Brussels sprouts. It's just too much. Like, no. I don't think no. anyone likes Brussels sprouts. I like, you like Brussels, Brussels sprouts. sprouts? Oh I love Brussels God. sprouts. You gotta cook them right. Oh <laughs> no. Or do you season them a certain way? Yeah, or bro. I'll send you. A, I'll send y'all both a good recipe. Don't oh worry. My God. <laughs> All right. You said you don't eat junk food, but what about veggie chips? <laughs> veggie. Veggie <laughs> chips. I've had. I've had them before, and I love them. Yeah. I got a question. So. You have a very busy schedule, right? How does eating, you know, how do you like bring in an eating schedule and make sure that you're on time and like fueling your body enough with the amount of time that you spend on academics and sports? Uh, for, well, how do I do that? It's just really like, I have like, it's not like picking between junk food and non-junk food because the only thing food that's around me uh that isn't hidden in special enclaves by parents is and so i only have non-junk food around me i mean like yeah so, i mean like quantity so like you know it takes i mean i eat like three thousand calories a day because i have to because i'm big and i you know i burn calories and stuff so like how do you eat between you do you have like snacks or like when you're studying or like how do you how do you manage that i don't really like do any specific calorie counting or anything i just I eat like a bowl of like oatmeal or cream of wheat for my breakfast. And then I like, I have two bananas, uh, sometimes three for like, I don't actually like, like one of the big surprises that's happened for me, like traveling recently is that lunch is a meal because usually I don't actually like, eat a meal that's lunch. I just eat uh, like two bananas and then I have dinner, which is like a lentil and then you have some vegetables and like a yam or something, not a yam, a sweet potato uh, and something like that for dinner. So I don't like watch calories. It's just like I eat certain things and it works out mostly for me. Yeah, that's important at your age. Just mm -hmm. eat when you're hungry, yeah. make sure you're eating the right things and you sound like you got it figured out. So I'm proud is, of you. Is being vegetarian something you've always been or did you kind of transfer into that diet? Uh, I've never had anything but fish. There was a period where, where like, uh, I was eating like a, a, like salmon, but like, a, but the uh, but the main reason I don't eat, I I mean I don't eat salmon anymore because it's like at some point I'm like I ask myself the question like, do I want a salmon to eat me for dinner? And then after I asked myself that question, I was like no, uh, so I don't like eat meat anymore, even though I. I know that meat has lots of healthy stuff mm -hmm. in it, but there are alternatives and I just can't, I'm a bit squeamish, like I can't even watch horror movies oh really. Gosh. So I just don't eat meat. Wow, that's discipline, that's, man. I know, that's impressive. I'm there's jealous. like, yeah, there's like vegan options, vegetarian yeah. options nowadays, that's crazy. The Beyond Meat, you be eating the Beyond stuff? No? Oh uh, uh, yeah, I've had uh, some of the Beyond burgers before mm -hmm. and they're, they're pretty good. Nice. That's impressive, girl. I'm so proud of you. That's, that's insane. A 15, that's crazy. Well, thank you so much, Zyla, for tuning in, man. I appreciate the conversations. It's been amazing chatting with you, getting to know you, and just featuring you here on our More Than an Athlete Hotline. Listen, guys, Zyla is amazing. She's next up. What's next for you? Like, in the immediate future, what's next for me is I'm going to be doing another presentation. I'm going to be doing a presentation at the ESPNW Summit. And uh, I'm look, definitely looking forward to it. And I have enjoyed the summit so far, uh, just talking about women and stuff. But it's one of my things. So that's what's next for me right now. That's awesome. Zyla, yeah, that's incredible. thank you so much. Clap it up for her behind the screens. Clap it up for her at home. <laughs> if we want to follow you on social media, where do we check you out at? Uh, I can be found on Instagram at Basketball as Art. I also can be found at Twitter and Facebook at Mama Help Me. <laughs> uh, same thing. Okay. Basketball is art. Basketball, basketball is, is art. art. Make That's sure beautiful. you guys check out Zyla and look uh, up as her. Art. Oh, basketball, basketball as, as art. A-S-R, right? Yes. Hey, make sure you guys yes. tune in, man. Give her a follow. Tune into her journey, man. She's very special, very smart, very talented. And this is not the first and last time you are going to see her, man. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Destroying. And I am Sedona. You can find me at socials at Sedona on TikTok and Sedona underscore on Instagram. Yes, sir. I'm destroying on all social media platforms. And make sure you guys tune in with questions, bro. Every month we're doing this and we're not going to answer nothing. If we don't have no questions, mm -hmm. call into our hotline or click the link below 
or leave a comment down below. We're going to tune in. We're going to check them out. We're going to answer them. And if you guys like the Drip or Rocket, make sure you click the link below or check availability at your nearest Champs locations because hopefully it's in there because we want to see you dripped out just like us, man. Our faces might just be in stores too. It might. It just yeah. might be. Who knows? <laughs> hey, we appreciate you guys so much. We're Audi 5000. Tune in with us next month, baby. See y'all later. Yeah.